Okay, uh, hello, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. So, welcome back. So, let's continue with our first type of AC bridge, which is called Maxwell's Bridge. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry about that. So, Maxwell Bridge. So, this is basically the rough figure of Maxwell Bridge looks like. Okay, so what is it? Okay, this is this type of bridge is also known as Maxwell Induction Inductance Capacitance Bridge. Okay, as you can see in this circuit down here, okay, there are not only resistance but you have capacitance, and you have capacitor, and you have an inductor, and despite instead of all resist, all the rest of the resistor. Okay, this is basically a modified version of DC Wheatstone Bridge. The DC Wheatstone Bridge previously looks like this, but with certain modification. For example, you change the DC voltage into AC voltage. And you add, um, <coughs> basically, you remember when for wisdom bridge, one of the resistors here can be a variable resistor. You still have the all four resistors in this uh, X, uh, Maxwell bridge, but you have an additional capacitor in parallel with R1, and you have an inductor LX, which is unknown. Okay, this is, let's assume for in this case, RX is the unknown and LX is unknown value. So basically, the main purpose or objective of having a Maxwell bridge is basically is to use it to measure the unknown inductance of a circuit. Okay, when you say inductance of circuit, let's say in this inductance, and in spite uh, also on top of that, we are also to measure the uh, equivalent resistance for the inductor. So basically, an inductor. Remember, an inductor is just a coil, but basically inside that coil. Instead of having a value of inductance L, there is also a resistive value inside the same coil because coil consists of wire, right? And a very long wire, wind, winding wire. So you have a long wire, then there is a resistance also built in inside that inductor. So we're going to, to measure that also. Okay, so the component for each branch is basically, okay, you can see, let's say I put a branch A. B, C, and D here. This is, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, all the nodes in this circuit. <coughs> so the branch between node A and C, we insert uh, A, A and C, the, an unknown standard resistor. Let's call it R2. Okay. And then for branch B and D also as well, you have a known variable resistor. So this is R3, a variable resistor, but you can vary that to a certain value that you can find what the value is lah. okay and you have another branch a and b between node a and b you have a, a known resistor in parallel with a known capacitor <coughs> okay and finally for the last branch branch c and d you have an unknown resistor in series with unknown inductor so basically this whole thing is basically a, a, a one unit of inductor but in inductor we can find what is the value of the inductance as well as the internal resistance. Okay, <coughs> and finally, um, oh no, before that, for branch B and C, you have a null detector. This is an AC null detector. Okay, and um, and uh, let's mention, uh, of course, there is an AC voltage here. Lah. Okay, so like any other Burgess uh, bridge circuits, its measuring capability depends on the balancing of the circuit. So, so basically what we have here, for example, you have an unknown inductor inserted in the circuit, you construct the circuit, like so, and then you will adjust the resistor R3 after you, you switch on the AC voltage, and there will be current going into the circuit and also and so on. And then un you adjust re uh, resistance R3, the resistor resistor R3, until the current or null detector between the point B and C shows zero. Okay, until this, this, this scale goes to in the middle, okay, until it's balanced, then uh, basically, uh, <coughs> then we can say that the circuit is balanced. Okay, then we can we can come up with the with the the, the parameter how to calculate the L L N R, the unknown inductor. So basically, when the circuit is balanced, the bridge current will be zero, and the voltage between the uh, unknown inductor will also be zero, which is you need V B equals to V C. If there's the same current at B and C, then the difference will be zero lah. Okay, so basically let's take a look and in mathematical forms, okay, <coughs> circuit form. So let's take branch by branch, okay, for the impedance for branch number one, 
okay, for branch between A and B, basically A and B here, between A, between A and B, so you have a resistor R1 in parallel to capacitor C1, okay, R1 in parallel C1, okay, so what is, what is R1, R1 is the value of R1, okay, so ZC1 is the, is the impedance for the capacitor number one here, okay, Right, so since these two are in parallel, we treat them as uh, we discussed in our last video that two parallel impedance can be calculated using a simple, um, like, like parallel resistance. So R1 multiplied by ZC1 divided by the, the, the addition of both two. And if you simplify it, okay, you know that ZC equals to J, 1 over J omega C. Remember, ZC equals to 1 over J omega C. Okay. And then if you simplify this equation, you plug into here, and then you will get this equation here. Okay? So for branch A and C, okay, for branch between A and C, all right, between A and C here, okay, so there will be a Z2, which is only resistor R2, okay? All right? And then for branch B and D, you have resistance Z3, the impedance Z3, which is only resist variable resistance R3. And then finally, for the last, last branch between C and D, which is here and here, you have a total, basically an, an unknown impedance, Zx, or you can call it Z4 before. Remember, our last bridge is also called Z4. So in, you know, since you want to find an unknown, um, this is considered an unknown branch. So we, we call it Zx. And it actually consists of an inductor and resistor in series. So when in series, then you just add them together. And the value of re uh, resistance Rx plus G omega Lx. Okay. All right. So uh, <coughs> we know that for any circuit at balance condition, all right, Z1 multiplied by Zx equals Z2 multiplied by Z3. Right. So this whole thing is Z1. This is whole thing is Z4 or Zx, and this is Z2 and this is Z3. Right. In balance condition. The product of these two must be equal to each other, okay? And then we insert that, okay? The equation that we have developed from previous slides, okay? Into this, okay? And then we got this equation here. And then we further separate, <coughs> we further simplify this equation, we open up all the brackets, okay? All right, to simplify it, okay? And as you can see, and bring, um, bring one value of, let's say, the Rx on one side and J omega Lx on one side and the value of R and J omega is 3 at one side. Okay. As you can see, if we group the real and imaginary, we can say that the Rx, the resistance is equal to this value here and J omega Lx, this value Lx is equal to the red, to the green color here, Rx equal to R2 multiplied by R3 multiplied by C1, okay? So this is basically the, the formula, okay? How to calculate uh, the unknown resistance and unknown inductance of, a induct of, of an inductor, okay? <coughs> so this is how we calculate it. So, but only at balanced condition, okay? Only at balanced condition. If it's not balanced, then you cannot use this formula. Okay. So hence, for the above condition, for bridge balance, the unknown inductance value can be determined. Inductance and resistance, okay, here, can be determined by comparison with variable standard capacitor. <coughs> okay. So, but however, okay, this one note here, however, this type of bridge is limited to the measurement of only a low Q factor, okay, I'm producing you a new parameter, a new variable that uh, a low Q, a, a Q factor of less than 10. And how to calculate the Q factor, a Q factor, quality factor is equal to omega multiplied by L of X divided by R of X and equals to omega R2, R3, C1 divided by R2, R3 divided by R1. And then if you cancel out, you can, ca can find out the Q equals omega C1 multiplied by R1. Okay, <coughs> so there's some advantage and disadvantage of a Maxwell uh, bridge here. So as you can see, the balance equation is independent of frequency. That's it one advantage, and it's very useful for measurement of wide range of inductance at power and out of frequency. So you can 
um, lesson from very small inductor so to a very large inductor then it's, it's very versatile so the scale of resistance can be calibrated to read inductance directly also okay but there are also a few disadvantages of this uh, Maxwell bridge uh, the firstly it cannot be used for measurement of high quality how Q value more than 10 as I mentioned before it's only limited to low than 10 so so cannot be used for measurement of very low Q qualities because of some balancing conversion problem that that's okay you don't need to cover here but just except for now this Maxwell bridge only <coughs> limited to cover uh, uh, for high Q value all right Okay, let's take a look few examples and how to solve some problems with Maxwell bridge. Okay, let's say you are given this Maxwell bridge and the value of the bridge constants, the R and C are given here. Let's say the C1 value is 0 0.01, R1 is this value, R2 is this value, and R3 is this value. Okay, 100 feet ohm. So the question asks you to find the series equivalent of the unknown impedance, which is this one here, Rx and Lx. <coughs> So solution is need to find Rx and Lx. So from the previous formula that I have shown you before, Rx is R2 multiplied by RT divided by R1. So you plug in the value here. <coughs> okay. Okay. So and then finally you have Rx equals 1.09 kilo ohm. And then it's uh, next one to calculate the inductance of the unknown inductance is just R2 RT multiplied by C1. Is uh, you plug in all the value given here. And then you have around 5.1 Henry. So Lx and Rx is this value here. Okay. So there's another example. I think it's pretty much the same uh, type of example. Um, except for the last one, it asks you to calculate the Q factor. Okay, Q factor. So I'll just go ahead and let me show you the how it is done. Okay. Just plug in the formula for balance condition. So in the first example and the second example, this one if we are assuming a balance condition. Okay, it's mentioned not mentioned here, but it's really in balance condition. So and then <coughs> similar with uh, Rx. Okay, you calculate using the same formula that we have used before. So you have these two different Rx and Lx, and it asks you to calculate the Q value. Okay, so Q equals this two value. So basically, it's around forty nine point nine. So it's suitable for my given. Eh? It's very high quality. Okay, I think it's also another example. Um, you can you can go ahead and and uh, read this example. I think it's pretty much straightforward, except for the different value of uh, the branch parameter. Okay, so at then I think that's all for Maxwell Bridge. We are going to continue for our next uh, video for Hayes Bridge, and I'll see you again next time. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, press like if you like this video and put your comments in the YouTube or in our YouTube. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. See you again.